having us a barbecue. Gonna get the cool slow, y'all, because we're having us a barbecue. <laughs> Good evening. Welcome to tonight's live stream. I'm going to get started in a moment. I just need to let everybody know that the stream is currently on the air. What's going on, Todd Muhammad? What's going on, computer robots? What's going on? Keep feeding work. Glad to see you all here. I'm just going to get through letting everybody on social media know that the stream is currently on the air. So bear with me. I will be getting into tonight's topic as soon as I finish with everything as related to promoting on social media. And with all the promotion done, I can do a little perfunctory, and then I'm going to get into tonight's show. Now, later on next week, I'm going to be having a live stream with Mr. Chris next Friday, and we are going to be doing a collaboration regarding the 2024 election and the upcoming war that's going to be waged on the people who are a part of new black media. Now, what we're doing is talking about things as related to the mainstream media looking to try to go out and try to discredit new black media due to all of the influence we've had over the last decade and the influence over the black vote. And that's going to be starting with me on December 26th. And on December 26th, that's when I'm going to be presenting part one of the video collaboration. And in part one of that video collaboration, mainstream black media versus digital B1 black media, we're going to be talking about what the ongoing war that's going to be try to be waged on new black media because Joe Biden is performing poorly at the polls. And as we go into that collaboration next week, it'll be part one on my channel, part two on Wednesday on Mr. Chris's nice radio network at 3 p.m. And then on Friday, we'll be working together in a live stream talking about mainstream media versus B1, new black media, and why new black media should be your place for getting all of your information. Now, with all that said, I'm going to be talking about tonight's topic, which shows us the importance of new black media like SJS Direct and why you should be supporting new black media like SJS Direct, because it's clear that those in Hollywood really continue to show their contempt for foundational black Americans with this remake of The Color Purple. Now, I was a teenager when The Color Purple came out around 1986 or so. And back then, I didn't know how much of a piece of crap this movie was. But as I've gotten older, I find it to be one of the worst pieces of anti-black man misandristic media. And this film was remade for a reason. It was remade for the reason of being able to, to recreate the rift between black men and black women. Because many in new black media have spoken against the original Color Purple, a book that was written 
by a black feminist known as Alice Walker. And this black feminist, Alice Walker, who was married to a white man of a certain religion and had a biracial child, basically used this book to elevate herself in the system of white supremacy by promoting an anti-black man narrative in between the pages of this book, which promoted an idea of a black man being a sexual predator who participated in sexual deviancy and being a sexual predator who basically went out here and participated in all sorts of deviant behavior with his own members of his own family. This is what the color purple promoted and basically promoted a narrative that made many of the racists on the white left comfortable because it promoted narratives that fit their ideals about black male behavior it's from the days of the antebellum South where they believed in the ideal that black men were these black brutes who had no sort of self-control and were basically violent sexual predators. That is what is promoted in the pages of The Color Purple and promoted as a story of black women not needing black men and triumphing without black men, the black feminist ideal, but that black feminist ideal was all about promoting white supremacy and promoting an anti-black man narrative. And that anti-black man narrative was basically rewarded in 1985 by the institutions of white literary institutions by giving Alice Walker the black feminist married to a white man with a biracial child a national book award and then this book was instituted into literary canon as a major part of American literature. And as it was promoted as a part of American literature, you had people like Steven Spielberg go out of his way to adapt this book. And he adapted this book out of all the pieces of black literature. And he did this deliberately because this was all about programming an idea in young black girls' minds and programming an idea in young black girls' minds that black men were sexual predators and sexual abusers. And this whole narrative was one that was very subjective and it was subjective because it was all about making the narrative that the black man was some sort of sexual predator. However, if one does their research like I have done, they would go and dig deeper and find that the black man was not the predator. No, the black man that Alice Walker puts in her book had to learn this from someone. And the person that this black man would have learned all of this deviancy from would have been the white slave master, but Alice Walker does omits that whole talking point in her award-winning book, and the editors allow her to do this because they want to promote the misandristic anti-black man narrative that the black man is some sort of sexual predator because that fits the white supremacist idea of black manhood and black masculinity. That's what the original novel, The Color Purple, was all about. That book basically was all about promoting a anti-black man narrative that demonizes black men and black boys. And as they promoted this narrative, it did devastating damage to black families, which were left reeling after the Black fem after the white feminists got the black woman to join their movement and become a part of their welfare state in creating a divide between the black man and the black woman. This book was used to be a piece of propaganda to further reinforce the misandry and create the foundations of what we call the gender wars. The Color Purple basically was a book that was designed to start creating the divide between black men and black women and reinforcing the divide between black men and black women 
where you had black women going out here and saying that there was this no good black man and making it like the black man was the villain of the black community and making it where the black man was seen as some sort of sexual predator. This is what was presented in The Color Purple back in 1986. And because you had Hollywood validating this as a mainstream media narrative, and you had people like Oprah Winfrey promoting this movie on her show, what happened was you had an incredible, a major generation of black women following behind these narratives and believing the narrative that black men were had bad character, believing black men were no good, believing black men were sexual predators, believing black men were not capable of being fathers, believing black men were not capable of being responsible. And this whole narrative basically turned an entire generation, I say two to three generations away of black women, away from black men, because it started with the baby boomer generation of black women who became a part of the feminist movement. But I know for a fact that many Gen Xers had their entire perception of black men basically warped by this movie and the Oprah Winfrey show, they had their entire perception of self completely warped to believe, oh, that they are, that the black man is some sort of monster. And that's why this movie, it, the original one was a danger to black people. And many black people didn't really know how bad this movie was until new black media came along and we had black men like myself to come out and start speaking out against this, the original color purple movie. And a lot of black men on social media and on their own independent websites, we came out and started speaking out against this piece of anti-black propaganda. And that started to change the entire narrative of this movie that was celebrated by many in America, like Keating Rourke says, as a landmark to American literature. At one time in the 80s, this book was considered to be an icon of American literature, but this book was a, made an icon of American literature because the literary and academic arm of white supremacy wanted to have this book to train and condition black students to believe that the black man was a monster. This is what was taught in classes in high school. This was what was taught in classes in college. I know because I had a family member who went to an Ivy League school and these books were basically taught as part of the literary canon and they were designed to reinforce the programming of an idea in black girls' minds that black men were not to be trusted, black men were predators, black men were sexual deviants, black men were monsters, this is what this book, The Color Purple, was designed to do. And the movie that it, it this book was based on was designed to further program the masses all over the world to see black men as less than human. So this whole original Color Purple, it basically was out here for a good, I say, 20 to 30 years. I say it's been around since 1985, and we didn't really see any pushback against it, I say, until about 2010 or 2012, when Black men started coming to YouTube. That's when we really started to see some pushback on this so-called piece of literature, and we start. that's when we started to see Black men starting to start to question this book, and question all its so-called narrative of so-called liberation for black women. Because when we look at this whole 
narr narrative, it sells us that the black woman doesn't need a black man and that if she goes out here and looks to support, she cannot trust the support of a black man. And that whole narrative is one that the white supremacist wants to push because the white supremacist, his main business is war and part of his war and winning wars is to divide and conquer the people as related to controlling them. And part of the way white supremacy controls black people is by dividing the black man and the black woman. And how they do that is by getting control of the thinking of the children. And they use anti-black propaganda to do this. And part of that is in academia with their with the literature. And it's also done with films as related to programming the black mind. That's what is done with media like the original color purple. And now that they see that there are people who are a part of new black media pushing back against these narratives and basically preventing refutations of these narratives with hard facts that shatter the narratives that academics like Alice Walker like to push. What they want to do is try to manipulate the next generation of people like Gen Y, Gen Z, and Generation Alpha to continue following the white supremacist narratives of racist literature like The Color Purple. They know that many people who have been online, they have, they're not going to go along with the original Color Purple from 1986 even though that film was critically acclaimed and celebrated, they know that there are lots of black people like myself who can shatter those narratives. But with people like myself getting older, what they want to do is get a hold of the next generation and start looking to create a divide between the younger generation of black men and black women with a new gender war. That's what this film is all about. It's all about recreating the gender war for a new generation and trying to reprogram the idea in the minds of brothers and sisters into believing that the black man is a violent brute and he should not be trusted and that black women can do things on their own, even though they have, are clearly seeing results that a black woman on her own is not working. That's something I point out in my book, why 70% of black women are single, because we had the boomer and Gen X and, Gen, and millennial generation get caught up in the rhetoric of white feminism. And as they got caught up in the rhetoric of white feminism, we saw the boomer generation become a part of the welfare state. We saw Gen Xers grow up to become single, successful, well-educated black women who can't find a man. And we saw many of the millennials and Gen Y and Gen Z basically struggling to find a way to have relationships. And that really works for team white supremacy because they don't want to see black men and black women coming together. However, with many more black male voices and black female voices coming out to speak against the original color purple, they could no longer use it as propaganda because one, the film is over close to 40 years old. And two, you have a lot of people who think of it as an old movie who are younger. And now you've got, because all these people who are getting older and aware of this movie, what they want to do is try to promote this message in this new version using young actresses like Halle Bailey and many others to further promote the anti-Black message to a brand new generation. And this is why I have to come on the air and do this stream, because we have to push back against this anti-Black propaganda that is looking to be sold to a new generation, because this release of, and remake of The Color Purple is deliberate by design, because this isn't about box office for white supremacy, because like Professor Black Truth says, 
entertainment for the mainstream media is about mind control. And because it's about mind control, it's about programming a mind to perceive the world a certain way. And the way they want black people to perceive the world is to make black women believe that a black man is her enemy. And they want the black woman to see a black man as her enemy, because one of the things that is a direct threat to white supremacy is the bringing of black men and black women together, because when black men and black women are brought together, the solidarity of black men and black women creates a, a bond where the white supremacists cannot go out here and look to put their programming into black people's minds. And instead of black people thinking the way the white supremacist wants them to think, what you have are black people who are God-centered and spiritually focused on the most high. And that's what the white supremacist doesn't want. Moreover, the white supremacist doesn't want to see black men and black women coming together because when black men and black women come together, they share black love. And when you have a black man and a black woman sharing black love, the white supremacist doesn't like to see black love because they can't make money on black love. When you have a black man loving a black woman, and caring for a black woman and a black woman loving and caring for a black man, they are not out here seeking validation and approval of whites and not putting whites on a pedestal where they deify white people. No, what you have are black people who are out here loving themselves, loving who they are, loving who they are going to build with and loving the people in their community. That's what you have when you have black people coming together and the white supremacist doesn't want to see black people coming together. So what they do is use their media to sow division in black communities. Great to see you here, Nightingale Wednesday Nightmare. Good evening, I'm happy to see you here. Deadzilla86 says that she didn't like the original. I didn't like the original too. And the way they make black men is demonic. Yes, they demonize black men in that movie. Now, Val Vault Hunter Sean says, who asked for a remake of The Color Purple? Well, the person who asked for that remake were a group of white supremacists who saw the influence of new black media. And as they saw the influence of new black media on the minds of especially young children, because uh, there are a lot of young viewers who do watch our media. And I've had a lot of people on Facebook who are very young. They would send me direct messages sometimes and who are kids in high school and stuff and people in college. And they don't like the idea that we're starting to have an influence on young people. And that's what they don't want. So that's why the white supremacist is out here looking to make this remake. They need this remake because they see the influence of new black media on black minds, and they know they can no longer push their anti-black narratives on this generation the way they did on my generation, Generation X. They cannot go out here and find a shill in and, and Alice Walker or a shill in Oprah Winfrey to be able to promote this their anti-black man narratives. They know they can no longer push those narratives and they know with new black media being outside of mainstream media, they know that there are people like myself who will openly push back like I did when I went on the Fox show show with Tammy Mack and they were sitting there praising this book and I was the one who came on the air and actually pushed back on this white supremacist propaganda. They know that there are black people out here to speak against this book. And that's the thing that has them scrambling to make these remakes because they hope they can get a group of spellbound black people to go, oh, it's got black people in it, so we should go and see it. But in the last 30 to 40 years, 
I believe our standard needs to rise. And we need to start saying, hey, we're going to watch something not just because Black people are in it. We're going to make sure that those messages in that product are ones that affirm us, ones that uplift us, ones that inspire us, and ones that elevate the Black image. That's what people need to start demanding because it's clear Hollywood with this color purple rebake is expressing its contempt for us. And again, expressing its contempt for us because they're seeing that their influence on black people is starting to wane. And the thing that really, really shook Hollywood was when they saw the success of Black Panther. Now the success of Black Panther basically shook Hollywood because they never expected a black fantasy movie to do well at the box office. They had no problem with black movies like Tyler Perry being out there because they promoted dysfunction. But Black Panther basically changed the game because one, it showed them that there was an audience for black fantasy and two, showed that images of black people that showed us in a different light were ones that would be accepted globally. And ever since then, what they've been trying to do is trying to go against the grain and continuing to try to perpetuate more stereotypes. And that's where we see this escalation of anti-Black media, like this Color Purple remake and that movie about the magical Negroes brought to the green light because they want to go out here and squash all of Black people's whole perception of self and get us back on the codependent road that the boomers and some of the Gen Xers were on because a lot of the boomers and the Gen Xers, they bought into the narratives of that media that, pro that programmed them, like the color purple, bought into the narratives of a black man being this sexual predator and abuser and brought into it and believed it to be the gospel truth without ever doing a single bit of research on the on the entire history of slavery and Jim Crow like I did when I was writing the first ISIS. I mean, when I wrote the first ISIS, I did a lot of research on the days of slavery, the days of Jim Crow, and the written and unwritten social rules that were presented in that area. I mean, the when you look at everything as related to all of what led to people becoming that type of abuser, it all starts with that white slave master and his wife. But Alice Walker omits all of that. She omits that many of these slave masters basically were the ones who were the first teachers of deviancy to many of the slaves. And it was the slave master who promoted a lot of deviancy with because he did not see the slave or at one man or the slave woman as human. And instead of holding those white people accountable, what Alice Walker did was try to pivot to the black man. And she, that was all part of her misandristic anti-black man narrative a narrative before she wrote The Color Purple, she used to misinterpret the works of, um, of a woman who, the woman um, who wrote Their Eyes Are Watching God. I, her name is Zora Neale Hurston. I mean, with Zora Neale Hurston, she basically looked to try to just pervert her, her books and her stories and by saying things in, like in the book, Their Eyes Are Watching God. What, Zora, what, what uh, Alice Walker did to Zora Neale Hurston's work, their eyes were watching God, was trying to make it, oh, like Janie Crawford, a biracial black woman was being abused by black men. But in actuality, when you take a critical look at the story, you start to see that Janie Crawford was the product of the sexual violation of her grandmother by a white man and the sexual violation of her mother by a white man. But in Alice Walker's eyes, it's the black men who were abusing Janie, but she never holds any of the white men accountable for creating 
the dysfunctional life paradigm of Janie Crawford, but I go and I make a refutation of this in an ebook and a blog I did many years ago because Janie Crawford was not abused by black men. No, how can she be abused by black men when she was the product of violence from white men and her, and her whole lineage came from the abuse of white men, but we're told by Alice Walker, oh, it was the black man who was the abuser. It was the black man who was a, a monster. And it was the black man who was the super brute. And this is the narrative that she pushes in her work. She pushes the narrative that the black man was the super brute. And that was the basis of the feces that allowed her to be a part of academia. All Alice Walker loved to do is push these super brute narratives that were ones that were validated by white supremacy. She loved promoting and pushing the whole narrative of the black man being the super brute. And after doing this and perverting the works of Alice Walker, what not Alice Walker, of, of um, Zora Neale Hurston, Alice Walker then started to take her own work and promote this narrative to go out here and win praise from those leftists in academia who were basically getting stimulated by being told what they wanted to hear. And as they got stimulated being told what they wanted to hear, what they did was go out and push her book as a bestseller, go out here and give her book a National Book Award, go out here and give her a film deal with Hollywood's A-list directors like Steven Spielberg. I mean, like Todd Muhammad said, the film came out in 86, but she got the award in 1985. And after she got that award, that's when they wanted to go out here and fast track this movie for a green light. I mean, I was, this was the very, this was a very fast track for a green light. And I believe that the fast track for the green light of the original color purple was because they saw the impact of Bill Cosby on black people. And as they saw the impact of Bill Cosby and the Cosby show on black people and having an influence on black people, they wanted to counter that with the color purple and they countered it with the color purple and started laying the seeds for the, what we call the gender war. Now, the, again, this book was a major, and Oprah Winfrey were a major part of creating the rift between black men and black women of Generation X. This book and this movie, along with the drug dealers in the black community who were put there as agents of white supremacy, basically or what created the rift between many of our good brothers and our and many sisters because as they sat there and watched this anti-black propaganda in this movie and watched this anti-black propaganda on the Oprah Winfrey show they started to say oh all black men are bad and especially a lot of the sisters who had come from homes with their father wound up divorcing or the father wound up walking away, they started to see black men as no good. And that basically created the rift between black men and black women that created a lot of the baby mamas of the second generation of black women. A lot of the Gen X women buying into this propaganda thought, oh, black men are no good and just settled for Pookie and Ray Ray instead of demanding better. And as they settled for Pookie and Ray Ray, this is what happened to create a self-fulfilling prophecy, a self-fulfilling prophecy where they heard media about no good black men, then got involved with quote unquote, no good black men. And again, that shows the power of media on the mind and shows us the power of how media can manipulate the mind of a black person to buy into ideas that are self-destructive to us. So we've got to be very careful about the media that we watch, and we have to be very careful to let the next generation know about the programming of media on the minds of black people by white supremacy. And that's why I have to go to air to speak against this anti-black propaganda 
that's opening on Christmas Day because this whole movie opening on Christmas Day is not a present. It's poison meant to program the minds of the next generation of brothers and sisters and look to try to turn the next generation of brothers and sisters against each other and continue a perpetuation of the gender war. That's what this movie is all about. There's a, there's a reason why they remade this movie out of all other movies. I mean, this was all about trying to get black folks brainwashed to start to hate each other again when we were just starting to see brothers and sisters starting to shake off a lot of this gender war stuff and starting to realize that we have to come together. That's what they don't want to see is black unity because black unity is something that the white supremacist does not like seeing. They, the white supremacist does not like seeing black unity because where there's black unity, you've got black people working together. And when black people are working together, they are not looking to look to depend on the institutions of white supremacy. No, instead of looking to depend on the institutions of white supremacy, you have black people working to take their power. And that's the thing that scares a lot of these white racists who control the media arm of white supremacy. What scares them is seeing black people coming together in unity and black people starting to do things like I am trying to do in trying to take control over our image. Because if we start taking control over our image and we start going out here and start seeing our own ideas about ourselves, that means we are not buying into the system of white supremacy and they can't control how we think. And that's what's got a lot of these people shook right now because they see how new black media has really impacted people's perception of self. I mean, we have black people no longer sitting there thinking they need to be a part of the blue party as related to politics. We have a lot of black people really starting to rethink the kind of media we watch as related to our image of self. And we have black people sitting there saying that they're not going to just take sides as related to people about people's struggles like in Israel. And that upsets a lot of people out here because they fear that if black people are thinking for themselves, they cannot be controlled. And that's why they're desperately scrambling to get control. And they do that by going out and making remakes of toxic films like The Color Purple. Again, The Color Purple is coming out right now for a reason. And it's coming out for a reason because they see black people starting to come together. They're starting to see us become more indifferent. So they need to get a message out there that gets black people back on the plantation as related to their thinking gets black people on the plantation as related to how they think and gets us sitting there thinking, oh, we got to go out here and continue to be a part of that codependent relationship. And that's what they want to do with this color purple, this musical version, because they know that music stimulates people's emotions. And because they know that music stimulates people's emotions, they wanted to use this musical with singing and dancing to try to get you emotional about this subject of this abusive black man and get you to believe that this black man is the bad guy. But more and more black people were starting to realize that this, again, this piece of media is nothing but garbage and you're not going to program us to believe that the black man is the monster when the actual monster was the white slave master and the white slave master was a monster because he was the one who was the original sexual deviant. He was the one who was the original sexual predator. He was the one who was the original sexual abuser. And he was the one who taught this culture to 
all of the people on his plantation as something normal and acceptable. But at, you won't hear Alice Walker talk about that part, but you'll hear Sean James talk about that part because, again, the critical question I have always asked is, where did everybody learn their dysfunction? I've asked that for years, and the person that they learned it from was the white slave master and the white slave master's wife and the overseer. These are the people who these black men, who they say were monsters, learned all that stuff from, but nobody calls them the monsters that they are. No, in the white media, all of that story is completely omitted, and it's omitted from Alice Walker's narrative, and it's omitted from her narrative because she wants to get a payday from her slave, her pay masters, and because she wants to get a payday from her literary pay masters, her academic pay masters, and her media arm pay masters, what she does is go out here and omit the talking points as related to the color purple, omit the talking points as related to the entire story of the color purple. And like Todd Muhammad said, yeah, black men are nonviolent because the oppressor is the one who is the one who was the real one who was violent. And again, the black man is not the abuser. It's the oppressor who is the abuser. And no one will go back that far as related to the real story of what they want of, of black people and all of the abuse know what the white supremacists and the white leftists want to do because they're both two arms on the same dirty person is try to make it look like oh it's the black man and project it onto the black man but we have to push back against this anti-black propaganda and let everybody know the truth about what happened in those days after slavery and those days after Jim Crow. We have to let everybody know where the root of everything is and where all the facts are as related to the real story of black people and all of the traumas regarding the legacy of slavery because that legacy of slavery and all the abuse people suffered all started with the slave master in chattel slavery dehumanizing black people, going out here and saying that with hit with the constitution, a black person was three fifths of a person and going out and saying, oh, we don't have to treat a black person as a human being. That's all part of the narratives that were promoted as related to black people. But, no, but Alice Walker didn't want to talk about all of that. No, she wanted to stimulate people's emotions as related to poor Seeley. And as she put on here, put, put, put stimulating people's emotions about poor Seeley, she was manipulating people into believing something that wasn't true and manipulating people into believing something that wasn't true in order to be able to get her grant money and get her funding because all of this basically was a grant money hustle and a movie deal hustle and a book deal hustle for her. But this did damage to generations of black people. And we have to stop that damage by, again, standing up for ourselves and turning this trash movie into the box office bomb it deserves to be. And it deserves to be a box office bomb because this film basically is one that is one that is looking to divide black men and black women for a future generation and continue perpetuating anti-black propaganda that make black men into monsters that they aren't because that's what white supremacy has been doing. They want to go out here and divide and conquer black people by destroying the black family and destroying the black family by dividing the black man from the black woman. What they want to do with this film is take the black woman and have her thinking, oh, this black man is the worst person in the world, that you he's so bad that you, you could, you're better off on your own. But when a black woman is on her own, she is vulnerable to white supremacy because what the white supremacist wants to do is 
go out here and foster a codependent relationship with her. And as they foster this codependent relationship with the black woman, what they do is go out here and gain power over the black woman and use that to keep control over her. This is something I go in depth on in my book, Why 70% of Black Women Are Single. And I go in depth on it because they want to keep black women single and they want to keep black women single because the one thing the white supremacist doesn't want is the building of a black family because a black family is something that they don't want because many of these white supremacists, they fear genetic annihilation and they also fear black people having a power as related to their population. This is why wars are waged on black people like the drug war and like the war um, on crimes, many of this is again really done to target black people and it's done to target black people because they don't want to see a black family come together. They don't want you to see black families unite. They don't want you to see black families being together and black families being united with each other and loving each other because a black family coming together is one of the things that terrifies white supremacists and it terrifies them because if you see a black family coming together, then you know that, th that there's no real, con white supremacy doesn't have much control because the black man is thinking for himself and loving black women. The black woman is loving her black man. But if they can get the black woman to start thinking of herself, as this victim of black male abuse, then she won't think to be loved by black men. And she will also go out here and think to teach her black children self-hatred. So this color purple book and movie, they were a great weapon of anti-black propaganda that worked in the 1980s towards creating this gender war and also further worked to further divide black people. So what they want to do is hope to use the same strategies once more. And they hope to use the same strategies once more because they saw how effective they worked in the 1980s. But in 2023, almost 40 years later, we have to show that these strategies do not work on us because now that we in new black media are aware of them, now that we in new black media are aware of them, we have to let every one of these white supremacists know that you're not going to program the minds of a new generation of people to hate themselves and to hate black men. No, we're gonna go out here and create media of our own, like I do on the SJS Direct imprint with many of the books that I promote that show black on black love because this is how we counter the narratives of books like The Color Purple by going out here and creating black literature of our own. This is how we counter these narratives with creating narratives of our own and stories of our own by taking control of our media and taking control over our narratives. This is how we push that by saying, our media is how we are going to get validation. Our media is the one we're going to value and approve. Our media is the one we're going to promote. Our media is the one that we are going to go out here and support. We are going to support new black media and we're going to go out here and stand by new black media because new black media is the thing that we create. It is the material we create to edify and uplift ourselves. And we are not seeking validation from media outside of new black media, because we know that that media from legacy media and mainstream media is mostly toxic. And since we know that it's toxic, we're going to look at it with a side eye, like I done with the color purple, deconstruct it for the toxicity that it has. And I've also deconstructed other books like Waiting to Exhale. Again, all of these books were promoted to black people to promote how 
bad our lives are, but there's a reason why those white female publishers pick those books over books like, like I go out here and write, because what they want to do is push an anti-Black narrative, a Black victim narrative, and they want to push these anti-Black and victim narratives in their books because they don't want to see Black people taking power, and they don't want to see Black people taking power because they don't want to compete with Black people like myself and many of my viewers. They don't want to compete with us, and they don't want us to get into a mindset where we're thinking about being competitive. That's what they don't want us to be, and that's why they continue to bombard us with this anti-Black propaganda in their media and will go out of their way to remake The Color Purple, but they ain't gonna go out here and remake a Do the Right Thing. I mean, I find it interesting, you wanna remake a movie written by, by Alice Walker, but you don't wanna remake one of Spike Lee's joints that really made you think about the state of life. I mean, I find it interesting, you don't wanna remake a Spike Lee movie or you don't want to go over to a writer like myself and adapt one of my stories, like A Temptation of John Haynes, which is filled with a lot of pro-Black themes and presents themes of Black empowerment. You don't want to go out here and make one of those books, like The Temptation of John Haynes or The Thetas, a book that shows Black women loving each other and coming together to love another woman, I'm as related to biblical love of each other. You don't want to promote that kind of love between women as related to being servants of a husband. No, you don't want to promote those narratives because those narratives are ones that edify and uplift Black people. And you don't want people coming out like people did in the late 80s with the Cosby Show and a different world. I mean, when Black people came out of the Cosby Show in a different world, you had people thinking about, hey, I want to improve my quality of life. I want to go out here and get a better job. If you were a brother out here in the 80s or for the different world, a lot of young brothers at the time were thinking about going to college. I mean, that's the power of programming. And Bill Cosby knew this. I mean, Bill Cosby knew this, and that's why he made The Cosby Show. He understood if I put positive images of Black people out there, it will, it will inspire people to be better. And you had other directors like Robert Townsend showing you how racist Hollywood was with Hollywood Shuffle. I mean, why don't we get a Hollywood Shuffle remake? Critical question I got to ask all those people in Hollywood who want to go out here and remake The Color Purple. You got money to make a Color Purple remake, but you don't want to make black films that make black people look good and inspire black people to be better. I mean, you want to make black movies, but you want to make movies that promote anti-black narratives. I mean, when I look at this film and the society, historical society of magical Negroes, I see the contempt that the left shows black people. I see the disrespect directed at black people. I see the, the just a anger directed at us from people who say that they're diverse and tolerant and want us to help them in preserving their so-called democracy. I mean, if this is your democracy where you deny black people a chance to tell our own stories, I gotta look at that with a side eye. I mean, you've, if you're saying that you want to help, want black people to be a part of your democracy, you're not really showing us any respect. I mean, this whole, these movies you're showing, again, that you've greenlit show great contempt. I mean, you want to, like Mogul May says, protect protect the narrative of the Black Boogeyman, and, which is the super brute, and that's what's shown in The Color Purple. Oh, he's a boogeyman. He's a Black Boogeyman. He's going to get you. He, he's out here. He's going to get you, and you got to do something about this boogeyman. That's what's shown in The Color Purple. Oh, this Black man is a monster. Well, I say you need to go look for the Dr. Frankenstein who created this monster, the white Dr. Frankenstein who created these narratives during the days of the antebellum South. I mean, when I looked, when I did my research, when I was writing the first ISIS and talking about 
the racism and white supremacy that ISIS ran into. I mean, I looked at that and I said, it's the white supremacists who created all this and created this mindset that can just destroy a black person's mind. And even when I was doing re research into the history of the what they call the biracial person or the mulatto, I could see how the white slave master dehumanized mixed people and basically treated them just in horrible fashions. I mean, the this was a this was supposedly his a child that he had with a slave, and you had the slave master basically abusing his own children and basically putting his own children into prostitution. I mean, this that's the kind of stuff that Alice Walker don't want to talk about. She don't want to talk about how the slave master did a lot of the people who were biracials or who you call mulattoes. I mean, they, there was no so-called preferential treatment when he's prostituting his own daughter and basically molesting his own daughter or participating in deviant acts with his own daughter. Don't want to talk about that part and what he was doing with that. No, Alice Walker don't want to talk about that. No, it's the black man who's the monster, but she don't want to talk about the white man at the slave master and all the sick stuff he was doing. No, she don't want to talk about that in The Color Purple. And they don't want to talk about all that sick stuff he was doing in the remake. No, they want to tell us the black man is the monster. And we and we in New Black Media got to push back on that. No, we in New Black Media, we got to push back on those narratives. And that's why we got to come out here hard against a, this Color Purple remake because we know the bigger picture of this is all about trying to manipulate young minds and get young minds to go against our own best interests. And our own best interests are best looked out for by the brothers and sisters in new black media like myself. I mean, this is why I was so passionate about looking to be a writer and a publisher because I understand that the media we watch and the books we read can influence our perception of self. And I'm starting to see the impact of the work that I'm doing here at SJS Direct. I mean, I've had people come up and tell me that the books that I'm writing have an impact on them. I mean, one guy, he read The Temptation of John Haynes and it changed his whole perception of black women. And I've had people who gave my ISIS and Esteem series books to their kids. And I've had viewers on and readers tell me on Facebook and social media how these books have changed their perception of black. I mean, this is why new black media is important because new black media is a direct counter to the anti-black misandristic narratives. And this is something I heavily push back on. This is why I feature a lot of men, black men like John Haynes in my John Haynes series. And I feature black fathers very prominently in my books. I mean, I go out of my way to feature black fathers in a lot of my books because I want people to understand that black fathers love their children, especially their daughters. That's why I put a lot of father-daughter stories together because the father-daughter relationship is one of the most important ones. I mean, the father-daughter relationship basically shapes the way a girl sees men and sees relationships with men. And it's very important for a father to be there for their daughters and show their daughters love because it's that father's love that really, really defines her perception of black men black manhood and black masculinity. It's that father's love that basically makes it where that girl sees herself as someone who deserves to be loved, someone who needs to find someone who loves them. So the father is very important to a black girl. And that's why when I'm doing stories like the Thetas or Recipe for Success, or even the Isis series and the Esteem series, I show the black father showing love to his daughter because I know the world out there that they're going in with white supremacy is all about teaching them to hate black men, teaching them that the black man is the bad guy and the boogeyman, teaching them that the black man is a monster. And I need to show you a black man 
who is out here showing love to his children, show you a black man showing love to his woman, show you a black man showing love to his family, showing a black man showing how much he cares about the people in his life. That's very important, I believe, for black children to read about and see in stories. It's very important for them to see a black man out here showing love to his family because when children see a father loving his daughter, when, when children see a father who's black out here showing that he's got great care for his family, that, cha that changes that child's perception of self. And when they see black men in leadership positions, they start to imagine supporting black male authority and black male authority figures. That's why it's important to read positive black media from new black media and have media out here that reinforces this. It's important because you have the color purple and other anti-black media out here telling you, oh, the black man is bad and you need to be on your own. But the Most High never meant for you to be on your own. In fact, he said it is not good for a man to be alone. And this is why he made women to be the helpmeet of men. Because if he said it was not good for a man to be alone, then it's not good for a woman to be alone. Because remember, when Eve was alone, this is when she was beguiled by the serpent and basically bought into the ideal she could know like God. This is where really deal really created the great sin. And this is why it's not good for a woman to be alone. But you have the white supremacists out here promoting this narrative through their black mouthpieces like Alice Walker. And as they promoted this narrative through their black mouthpieces like Alice Walker, they basically took women, black women off the road with God and put them on a road to codependency with white supremacy. And as they were put on this road to codependency with white supremacy, they have basically been on a road of misery. And what they wanna do is find more company of the next generation to follow with this color purple remake. That's what they want here. They want to go out and find more black girls, but we out here in new black media have to be the ones who try to make an effort to stop all this. We have to push back. And again, pushing back is by providing tangible alternatives. And that's what I do here on the SJS Direct Imprint. I wanna provide a tangible alternative to this type of toxic media because this kind of toxic media has already destroyed a ge Generation X a lot of the sisters out here making them into single moms or bitter single women. And I don't want to see the young sisters out here fall down the road of buying into this propaganda because this is what it is. It's propaganda. It's anti-black propaganda. And this color purple is anti-black propaganda. And we have to acknowledge that it is anti-black propaganda because the only way, the only reason why they remade this film is because of our of the influence of new black media. And they want to reinforce the programming now that the film is 40 years old. They want to reinforce that programming at, 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 on this film to get another generation lost. And like Dadzilla86 says, yes, we need to form, unite like Voltron. And I have to say we unite like an army against this kind of film because this film only allow, it can perpetuate these, these, this racist stereotypes only if we allow it to do. And the way we push back is by controlling our dollars and taking those dollars over to new black media, like the SJS Direct Imprint. You have to take your dollars over to new black media, like the SJS Direct Imprint, and pick up positive media, like the books on the SJS Direct imprint. I mean, this is what we have to do as related to our media. I mean, this is what we have to do over this holiday season. 
I mean, I've got a lot of great positive black fiction, and I've also got some great nonfiction that will show you what what the real deal is as related to this uh, whole color purple remake. I mean, I've got lots of great fiction and nonfiction. I've got fiction for readers of all ages and readers of well, especially our kids to influence them as related to seeing a positive image of self. And you guys can pick that up on amazon.com by clicking the link in the, in the description box, because I think that's the one that's active and you can pick up those books and again, help yourself out. And I've got nonfiction on there. Likewise, 70% of black women are single. I mean, I work hard to get this, this type of media out because I know how toxic the media is. I mean, the media has been toxic, I say, since 2001 when Halle Berry won the Oscar for Monsters Ball. And it's just been getting worse with the Tyler Perry movies and the Lee Daniels movies. And it's just this getting further worse because now they're continuing to put out more anti-black propaganda. I mean, putting out a new color purple movie, this was deliberate with malice of forethought and again, willful and intentionally done to go out here and make us start to become our own worst enemy for another generation. And we've got to start working towards pushing back and breaking this cycle because if we have another generation sitting there watching the color purple, then we're gonna get another generation of people buying anti-black literature and support believing everything in it not understanding that you've been bought into a narrative created by white supremacists to get you to hate yourself. Um, Rudy One says, what do I rec rec recommend for a nine-year-old girl? Well, I can easily recommend that you pick up many of the ISIS series books. Those are great for nine-year-old girls. I mean, My Sister, My Friend of Me is a good book for a nine-year-old girl. All That Glitters is great for a nine-year-old girl. ISIS, the main event. I mean, most of the ISIS series books are great for nine-year-olds. I had a reader tell me, a viewer tell me that he gave them to his daughters and they enjoyed them. You can also get the Esteem series books. Those are great for a nine-year-old um, because all of those books are written to be rated PG and they are for readers of all ages. I mean, those are great for a nine-year-old girl. And I would also recommend the Thetas uh, that's a black sorority book, but that's the one that's about, about 350, 400 pages. But the ISIS series books are 65, 70 pages or 100 pages at best. And all of those books in the ISIS series, those are all great for young girls and really good books overall to read to get a positive image of black women as heroines. And I have other books, but they're a little for older girls like Spellbound and the books of the, and Eternal Night and the Spinsterella Trilogy. Those are books that are great for you, for older girls. I mean, well, they're the, the only reason why I'm saying that for, for older girls is because the, lang the language in them are, is a bit rougher. There's a, a little bit more of an R-rated language in Spellbound, but the other ISIS series books are PG and they are for all ages, they're the safest books I produce. I mean, when it comes down to the SJS Direct Universe books, for the most part, I make them for, fa for family reading, something that you would feel safe to share with your children. I mean, even some of the John Haynes series books, I would say are safe for children. I mean, even with the John Haynes at Death Store comic, I wrote it deliberately to be for kids. And I, no, this is the flash. <laughs> I was reading that. This is safe for kids. John Haynes at Death's Door and John Haynes, Godbreaker. I mean, all of these books in 87, 87 is definitely great for kids because it's, it's a book about a 13 year old John Haynes. So I try to write stuff for younger readers and I try to write stuff for families. And I try to also write some, I write some adult books, but I try to keep it where there is material for girls. I originally designed the ISIS series for young girls to have a black heroine. And I also did the Esteem series for girls to have a black heroine because I understand, again, what our little girls are dealing with, with this anti-black propaganda, where they're being exposed to stuff that really is twisted. And the color purple is one of the most twisted things I've seen. And 
uh, since Precious. And I really, again, I have to warn people about this movie because this movie isn't about empowering us. It's about getting us to be on a victim narrative and be on a victim narrative where we're codependent to white supremacy. I mean, this is something that I try to get out here and provide counter media because this media is anti-black media and they're putting it out on Christmas to throw a middle finger up at us, knowing a lot of us will go to the movies on Christmas, but this movie isn't a present. It's a Trojan horse made from propaganda. It's a Trojan horse made to get us, and it's a Trojan horse to get us thinking bad about black women and get black men to be seen as the bad guy, get the black man seen as a boogeyman and a demon who is only thinking about sex when, as a black man who has networked and collaborated with black men like Mr. Chris from Chris and Company and Gboot 2786 and Mr. Superboy and many others, I have seen a picture of intelligence in black men. I have seen great responsible black men. I mean, I've seen black men who care about their community. I have seen black intelligence and black excellence in black men. And that's the picture of black manhood I try to represent. And I try to represent the excellence of black manhood and black masculinity. I mean, that's what I want to present on this channel and with the content of the SJS Direct Imprint, because I understand that it's influential to people and it can influence a generation of brothers and sisters to go out here and believe we can do better. And I know we all can do better than this anti-black propaganda calling itself a remake of The Color Purple. And the way we deal with this is by taking our green dollars and investing it in black owned businesses like the SJS Direct Imprint. We invest our green dollars in black owned businesses that edify and uplift us. That's what we do to counter these anti-black narratives by supporting new black media because it's new black media that's going to take us to a level that empowers and uplifts us. And that's what we need to get on code as related to supporting. Now, I'm gonna wish everybody a Merry Christmas because this is the last live stream I'm going to do before the holiday. That's why I've got on my festive red and green Christmas shirt. And that's why I'm all dressed up for tonight. I really want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas if I don't see you guys on social media. So I really want to thank everybody for coming out to tonight's stream. And before you go, I want everybody to, you know, head over to Amazon.com and pick up many of the books on the SJS Direct imprint, like John Haynes' Godbreaker, which is a part of the 2023 SJS Direct catalog, and John Haynes' 1987, which is a part of the 2023 SJS Direct catalog. Both of these books, which are positive images of black boys and black manhood, can be found on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format, along with all of the books of the Isis and Esteem series, which present a positive image of black girls and black womanhood. And you can also pick up the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, which show you a black girl growing up in Harlem and the goth scene. And you can also find other great books on the SJS Direct imprint on Amazon.com. And you can find my books like by 70% of black women are single there as well. And you can also pick up the John Haynes comic. This is the first full John Haynes comic, John Haynes at Death's Door. And you can get this comic on Lulu right now uh, for the same price of the 2022 Kickstarter. So you can get all these, all these material on lulu.com. Everybody says it's a great book. And I want to get more readers to check it out. And I'm hoping you guys will pick this up. These are great gifts for your family. Now, I think December 26th, I might offer a free book um, for everyone as a, my gift to you. So you can check out the post section to find out what that is. And if you want to help out the channel and help me be able to make my next SJS Direct comic, you guys can don't send a donation to the Cash App. It's greatly appreciated. 
or you can send a donation to the PayPal. That's also greatly appreciated. And again, I want to thank everybody for coming out to tonight's stream. And I hope you'll be there for next week's stream. Everybody have a Merry Christmas. One full boss, thank you for the Merry Christmas. Um, thank you for Night and Go Wednesday Nightmare and everybody else for the Christmas wishes. And I, I'm wish, wishing everybody a happy holiday. And I'm hoping everybody has a good night. And I hope you'll be there for next Friday with extra special guest, Mr. Chris. And I hope you'll be there for that great stream. And I hope you'll have, again, a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday. Everybody have a great evening and everybody have a great night.